Hello everyone, welcome to Skadia.com. My name is Hira Imran and today we will talk about musculoskeletal imaging. So musculoskeletal uh, imaging, uh, to first understand both the terms, we will actually break it down. So musculoskeletal is uh, an umbrella term and uh, it uh, constitutes a, a number of different structures like all the muscles in the body, all the bones in the body, all the intra-articular uh, structures, uh, the bursas, the ligaments, the tendons, they're all components and uh, coming under the domain of musculoskeletal system. So obviously musculoskeletal imaging will be the how all of these structures appear on normal radiograph and what is the abnormal presentation of all of these structures. So all of this comes under this musculoskeletal imaging, the normal and the abnormal. So this is what we're going to talk about today. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is the musculoskeletal imaging requisition. We're going to discuss a form in detail. We're going to talk about the views of x-ray, uh, the, uh, the anterior posterior, the lateral, the posterior anterior views. We're going to talk about um, uh, ultrasound, the entire requisition form, the musculoskeletal imaging requisition form will be discussed. So then in the Second part, we will talk about the fracture classification. So fractures can uh, be classified on the basis of the region or area in the bone where the fracture it has uh, resulted due to some injury or trauma. So the area on the bone uh, can be a determinant of the type of fracture. For example, if uh, the fracture is of the shaft of the bone or the diaphysis of the bone, it is called diaphyseal fracture. If the fracture is uh, present in the neck of the uh, of the bone, it is called metaphyseal fracture. So if it uh, uh, is present in the uh, growth plate, it is called a physial fracture. And if it is present in the head of the bone, or it is called a epiphyseal fracture. So fractures can also be classified on the mechanism of injury. For example, if a compression injury resulted in fracture, it can be called or it is called a compression fracture. If a rotational injury resulted in the uh, fracture, then it is going to be called a um, spiral or rotational fracture. So, um, and then uh, fractures in the children are different. So we're going to talk about uh, uh, that in detail. Salter-Harris classification will be uh, discussed in uh, this section. And then um, we will talk about uh, healing of fracture and how uh, the bone heals. So normally it takes uh, 6 to 12 weeks uh, for a bone to heal, but there are a lot of uh, factors that determine the time required for the uh, bone to completely heal. We're going to touch uh, all of the, these aspects and discuss that uh, in detail. And finally, we're going to talk about the radiological features of degenerative joint disease. So uh, what are the degenerative features of uh, uh, the joint? We're going to talk about that. Uh, so that involves the joint space narrowing. Uh, we're going to talk about how everything that is uh, uh, resulting in uh, degeneration is actually participating in further uh, uh, degenerative process. So it's, it's, a, it's a cycle. It's a, it's a cascade that will be discussed. So we will discuss how joint space narrowing causes sclerosis, how uh, sclerosis causes uh, osteophyte formation, and uh, this entire um, cascade will be discussed in uh, the last section of the video. So that is it. And uh, I hope uh, you will uh, like the entire lecture. Thank you for watching.